Beller signing a new extension, four years. And Marco, of course, traded from the Montreal Canadiens to the St. Louis Blues. Another good deal by Doug Armstrong. And pleased to have Marco here. Marco, how are you doing, big boy? And welcome to the program. Thank you. Just really excited to be a part of the community, the organization. <clears throat> I was telling my family and friends from day one, I just felt like it was home. And uh, the guys made me feel welcome from day one. It was unbelievable. Uh, I knew a few guys on the team too, but uh, just getting to know the community, getting to know St. Louis as a city, I just feel like it was such an underrated, sneaky place to play, and uh, I just enjoyed it so much. I was like, I had to say. You had mentioned it a couple of times during the season when you when you joined the Blues that the old Central Division is more your mentality and taking nothing away from when you were in, in Buffalo and in the East or in Montreal in the East, but uh, just that comfort level. It's like an old comfort food there in that in the Central Division for you. Absolutely. It's a bigger game. Uh, it's more my style, uh, you know, just a systems game. I just felt like coming to St. Louis and uh, getting back in the Central is just amazing. How uh, we Everybody knows what to do on the ice and uh, playing with a guy like Perry. I mean, it's not every day you have a deep, a deep partner that's six foot six who can skate like that. So, uh, I mean, I just felt like I came into a great situation, an established team. And uh, I just have to thank the organization for giving me the chance for four more years to be a part of this. I feel like we have a great chance to win every year. And at the stage of my career that I'm in right now, just to be a part of this is something really special for me. Was there any anxiety for you knowing that the league had been postponed because of uh, COVID-19? Here you are, going to be a possible unrestricted free agent. You love it in St. Louis. And yet Doug Armstrong and the Blues just kind of made this happen uh, kind of stealth like it, no one really saw it coming. I know, I know. It, it was a little bit weird. I felt like I only played 11 games, so I wasn't sure what was going to happen, but I know I enjoyed my time. Uh, it was uh, unfortunate that the season kind of was put on pause, but I feel like everyone's in the same boat. Everyone's having a little bit of anxiety, training at home. I made a little makeshift uh, basement workout area, and I feel like everyone's kind of doing their own thing right now. But uh, I was fortunate enough to, uh, to get the chance to have four more years. But like I said, I just feel blessed, honored. Uh, to play in this organization and like I said I just feel like St. Louis is such a sneaky place until you play there you don't understand how nice it is people are friendly it has that Midwest feel kind of like Minnesota too where I played for seven years and uh, the team is just so close together it's it's something really special and I'm just happy to be a part of it. Marco you mentioned that you're uh, your home where are you right now and and uh you mentioned the makeshift basement. That's something really interesting. I've talked to a number of players that they don't have anything at home, so they've had to buy a Peloton bike or they've had to buy free weights because you're so used to going to a facility and doing your training there. So what did you, you do and, and where are you right now? So I stayed in St. Louis for about 11 days during the COVID-19, the beginning of it. And then I decided, you know what, I'm just going to go back to Canada. It didn't look like it was going to end anytime soon. And uh, you know, I just wanted to get home and see family or be around family in case my mom needed something or so I ended up coming home, and then uh, I decided to rent a cabin about an hour away from Montreal on this nice lake. And, uh, you know, just kind of get away from the city. I just wanted to have enough space because uh, being in lockdown, if you're in a little uh, small condo, it's a little bit tougher. So what I did was uh, I also bought a, a bike, not a Peloton, there weren't any left. I bought uh, one of the, <laughs> uh, the tour bikes, and uh, I got that, a mat, a kettlebell, uh, just a makeshift gym. So I've been doing some uh, Skype workouts with my trainer, and uh, he sent me a whole program too. So, and I don't know if you uh, if you saw, but I've actually been going for uh, for walks in the woods and chopping some trees down, dead trees. But uh, yeah, just getting a workout in, trying to have fun with it. That's got kind of, that. Well, I did see that, and uh, good chopping skills too, as well. Uh, that's got a that's a different kind of uh, workout, isn't it, with the old shoulders? Yeah, it's a different kind of workout. Uh, when I was a young kid, we had a cabin up north uh, in La Belle. It's about two hours north of Montreal. So every weekend, my dad would take me up there. And that's something that he taught me from day one. It's just uh, hard labor. I feel like it's so good on the mental. And uh, so we bonded really heavily with that growing up. And he always made me use the chainsaw, chop trees down. So he made me work. He taught me that. And uh, it, it was always fun to me. So I enjoy it. Uh, I've seen you work in front of the net. You and Colton Preco be chopping down wood there. Once we resume playing in a seven-game playoff series, uh, that's yeah. <laughs> uh, it's good, good, good for you. And, and you were you, you're a Montreal kid, and you got to play in Montreal, and you got to play your first game in front of your your family there against the Pittsburgh Penguins, and then you actually eventually you end up scoring a goal right there at Bell Center. That that must have been unbelievable for you, experience-wise. 
It was incredible. I felt like it was uh, it was such a quick thing, though. I played there two months. Uh, I actually scored against Toronto, so it was something I always wanted to do. I remember playing against Toronto. All my <laughs> friends were like, tonight's the night. I think it was already 14 games that I was with Montreal, and they were like, tonight's the night you're scoring. And uh, it just felt good to score at the Bell Centre. My brother and my mom were there. Um, I think we were, we were down a goal with two minutes left. Oh, big surge. Big surge. <laughs> And, and, and we'll segue this into Montreal because we've got uh, we've got Sergio here, the big fella. Look at the blue sweaters behind you, Serge. Welcome and, and thanks for dropping in. And and obviously, big news here in St. Louis with uh, with Marco signing uh, in a place that you love so much. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I said let me go down in the in the uh, I'm down in the basement. I have my sweaters up, and I said uh, the St. Louis sweaters will be right in the background here. Love them uh, for sure. And uh, on the other side, I have a photo with my dad and, and my Canadian stuff there. But uh, he really has a chance now to be on a top team, which is great. And uh, that's what we, you know, you, you play to make the NHL. And then eventually after playing, uh, you know, seven to ten years, uh, you want to get a, a contract where you feel comfortable. And then also to be in a place uh, where you could win. And I think he's in a perfect spot. The team is set up perfectly for the way he plays that division and uh, the Western Conference. And um, I couldn't be happier for, for the kid, that's for sure. Obviously, for people that don't know Sergio, you and obviously Marco, uh, you being his uncle and, and uh, you know, growing up watching him develop, he grew up in the games. Marco, do you remember uh, any of the games uh, that Sergio played or is there any memories that you saw, whether it's a St. Louis Blue, a Vancouver Canuck, a Montreal Canadian? I remember his time in Vancouver a little bit, going to my grandmother's house and watching games, him and Burry tearing up the ice. But uh, <laughs> I was a little bit young when he was in the league, but uh, I, I do remember him playing. Sergio, you and Burry together, a uh, little speed discrepancy there? <laughs> it was great, actually, because uh, you know what, what's going on here, Panger? We're all watching old games now uh, because of the situation. And they were showing the other night the 94 series um, – against Calgary and then um, then against Dallas. And there was a few shifts where I was out there with Pavel. Uh, obviously, I was in front of the net uh, and knocking people down, getting in front of the goalies, you know, that panger. I had to do that. And then Pavel yeah. flying around and scoring goals. And it was, uh, it was great memories, uh, no question, to play with such an elite player. Um, obviously, in St. Louis, I played with Adam Oates and Brett Hall, which was my best uh, year ever in the NHL point-wise uh, playing with those guys. And Peter Zezel also, I have to mention, uh, rest in peace, who uh, also was at center in my day in St. Louis. So we had uh, we had Rod Brendamore that was there too. People remember, obviously, Rod that's coaching in Carolina. Um, a lot of really good players uh, that uh, I got a chance to play with in St. Louis. And uh, we just couldn't get uh, as far as the Blues did uh, this past uh, season in winning the whole thing and I know in St. Louis that um, you know it, it, it was always thinking oh baseball first but hockey was always there the, the people always love their their players their they're loyal to their to their players over the years through the good years and the bad and I'm so glad for St. Louis and now that Marco has signed a four-year deal there um, I know that every time I come there I'm gonna have a place to stay <laughs> but just save me a little spot downstairs near your wine cellar, Marco, and I'll be okay. How, how much, uh, for those that don't know, um, some of our viewers, I mean, Sergio Momesso, obviously a big, powerful winger, but you're, you're doing radio and you have been doing a great job in Montreal for the Montreal Canadiens. And then you had a chance to broadcast Marco and seeing him down at, at, at you know, playing and, and wearing a, a Montreal Canadian sweater during that time. How much communication did you have with Marco and how much did you help him out while he was going through that phase of being a Montreal Canadian, Sergio? Well, I did talk to Marco a little bit before during the season in Buffalo, knowing that it was a, uh, you know, a, a, a year where he was a free agent at the end of it. So kind of figured he was going to move. And the situation in Montreal with the defense uh, being hurt and, and a, a lot of uh, focus on getting a left-handed D to try to help them out mm -hmm. to make a push to make the playoffs. I spoke to Mark Bergman about uh, about trying to acquire Marco, and when he came here, um, it was a good situation for him. 
just to play. Uh, unfortunately, the team doesn't have the horses to uh, to make the uh, the playoffs. So I, then again, we knew that uh, he was going to be on the move again because for Montreal, if they weren't going to make a playoff, uh, they were going to start liquidating some assets. And, you know, for Montreal, at the end of the day, they get a second round and a fourth round pick if he signed. And now that he signed, for them, uh, it's good. Uh, and for Marco, it's good too. Obviously, going to a cup contender and a, and a solid team. Um, I did get to. I, I left Marco alone for the first couple of weeks because I know it's overwhelming when you first get traded, especially when you come to Montreal. There was interviews left and right in English and in French, of course. So you have to deal with that, and then you got to settle in. Um, you know, see your friends and your family. So I, I know. I just said I'll talk to you when we have a little more time and. We got together on a road trip when we were in Pittsburgh. There was Pittsburgh, Boston, um, and then we had a day off in Pitt. So we went to lunch together. We had a really good day together. Uh, I, I know the grind of the NHL. I know the situation that he was in. I didn't want to bother him. But, um, you know, we had a really good day. And that week, the team lost all the games. And I said, you're, you know, we, I don't know where I'm going to get moved again, which was kind of um, strange. But... Uh, you know, the situation with Bomeister going down, I said, you know, you might go to St. Louis because you fit the right spot. You're a left-handed D that could skate. And obviously to play with Pareto is, um, is, is it's so great. Uh, you just have to do, uh, do your job and the rest, uh, he'll take care of it. And uh, it, it makes it easier. People say, you know, when you play in, in, the, uh, in the NHL, it's, it's a lot easier to play with good players. There's no question about it. It makes your life a lot easier. You know, Banger, you're a goalie. If you've got solid D in front, you make that first save and the rebound is, uh, you know, is thrown away in the corner. Um, it just makes life a lot easier. And I know in Buffalo and in, and in Montreal to an extent, you know, there was a lot of running around in their own end. And it, it's tough. It, it's tough when you don't have uh, all the right pieces. And I think in St. Louis, so, well, you could tell that uh, after winning a cup, he has uh, gone to a team that's, that's solid for years to come. So, you know, having fun playing hockey again, I think is – you could see it in um, in his enthusiasm out there on the ice. I mean, you, you you're just so happy that you're playing on a winning team, and um, winning is so fun when you're playing in the NHL. It, it there's money, yes, but to be on a winning yeah. team is you, you can't compare. You you were on the Hawks there, you know. Um, it's a great atmosphere, so I'm I'm really glad for him. And, and Marco, you've always been that way. I'm just you you rolled into that Blues locker room, Marco, and it was like. You'd been there for 10 years. It, just your adaptability and your personality, just it, it was seamless. It, it'd be like, Marco, it was like you were, you, were, you were there for 10 years. That must have been a great feeling. I appreciate that. But the guys made me feel great from day one. We went to lunch together. Everyone was calling me, how are you doing, picking me up. I thought I was going to have to take uh, cabs to the rink, and guys were like <laughs> fighting to take me to the rink. So, like I said, just the camaraderie, just the like, tightness of this team. Um, I knew right away when I got there, I was just like, this is home. I, I hope they like me as much as I like to be here. And like I said, it's uh, just the fans too, the enthusiasm in the building, playing two playoff series with Minnesota against St. Louis, just the battles that we had. I always uh, wonder what it would be like to play, play in St. Louis, a structured game. I feel like it fits the mold of me as a player. And uh, it's been amazing. And I'm just really happy to be a part of it. Like I said, to have a chance to win at this point in my career, this is everything I want. It's all I want to do is win. And uh, to have a really good chance every year, I mean, that's just that's, that's a dream right now. I'd like to go into a hypothetical for you then, too, because we're in this, you know, COVID-19 where people are playing video games and they're matching up. And how about you matching up against Sergio? Well, what kind of battle would that be? Big surge coming to the front of the net, and you just big pounding surge. away, chopping away at the big guy. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, if you could take the player that he was and put him and like give the skills that he has, maybe put him on a three-on-three -three rink, you'll have a chance. Who knows? Probably not with the skating anymore. But uh, big surge was—he's uh, got good hands. I've skated with him. He's got really good hands. He could finish. Uh, really good player. Tough. Big, big unit. Big body. He definitely scored enough on me, Serge, going to the front of the net. And, 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 you know, I know, Marco, you didn't play against Brett Hull, but you saw him play. You know, just visualizing Hully, Sergio, 
those great years that you had to uh, Sergio and, and, and playing with Holly and what, what do you have the 86 goals, the one year with you, the 72 goals, the other year, man, that must've been a ride. Kind of the same feeling as what Marco is saying right now, coming into St. Louis and knowing that every game, it's going to be fun because you've got a chance to win every single game. And for you, Sergio, when you were playing with, uh, with Holly and Oates and the boys, uh, you had a chance to win games big every single night. That had to be a blast. Yeah, I mean, we we had the offense. There was no question about it. Uh, the problem is we we gave up too many goals. You know, we'd score we'd score four or five, but we'd give up six. But in the in in those days, uh, I mean, it's still like they gone back where uh, a little bit. Uh, well, you got to get through your own division, and uh, unfortunately, Chicago was uh, always uh, had that one little extra. A goal or or extra game that they would come up with, and uh, we were just missing something there to to get by Chicago. But so many great battles, uh, obviously against Chicago, Minnesota, the Chuck Norris division, uh, the uh, Toronto, yeah, Detroit, yeah, so, and uh, yeah, you know when they had Probert and Kosher. So um, you know there, there was uh, there was a lot going on other than just hockey in, in our day for sure. But uh, <laughs> with Holly. Um, you know, I knew my job was to get in front of the net and uh, to, to dig the puck out in the corners to get it to Adam Oates so he could set up, um, you know, Holly for, for the goal. And, and that's, that's what it is on a team. Everybody has a role to play. And, um, you know, so when you're on good teams, uh, it, it makes your job easier. Uh, you just have to do your job and everyone else will take care of itself. And they definitely have a solid, uh, they're well balanced. And that's, I love the size, you know, like I know the game is quick and um, a lot of uh, skill. But uh, when it comes down to a playoff seven-game series, you saw St. Louis, Boston, big physical teams that, um, that could score, that can play, and uh, can also play physical. So to win, you got to play. you got to be able to play different styles of game. And, um, you know, so they're well set up for that. And that's uh, it's fun to watch. There's no question. When I finish my games uh, here in Montreal, I get home, and because uh, you guys are an hour later, I end up watching. Uh, I ended up watching all the St. Louis games in between to watch Marco, and I, I watch a lot of his Minnesota and Buffalo games when he was playing. Cause it's nice to have uh, a family member in the league and uh, see what's going on. So, as you know, Panger, we lo- we watch a lot of hockey, and uh, you know it's in our blood, man. Yeah, that's exactly right. And the the passion of the games in your blood, and uh, it is with Marco as well. And we 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 knew that. So. Gentlemen, I want to say thanks for joining us. And Sergio, for you popping in here and coming in and, and uh, kind of surprising Marco. That's always a nice surprise. And, and uh, Marco, congratulations. A four-year extension. You and Colton Preco look like you've been paired for a long time. So uh, great work. And uh, thank you guys for doing this. And, and Marco, hey, watch out with the, the chopping of the wood up there in the woods, all right? So watch the feet when you're coming down with that big strike. Okay, big guy? I uh, will. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Well, congratulations. We're thankful in St. Louis to have you, too. And Sergio, you as well, pal. Have a great day. Okay, boys. Take care. Talk to you soon. Sounds good. Take care. See you, Sergio.